All right, so this is going to be a quick run through of some different things you can do with the Maya render setup um, layers thing. Um, most of you probably haven't used the old version, but there used to be render layers down here that were near a separate tab with the display layers and whatnot. But now it's different, and instead you can manage your render layers from up here under the render setup window. You get something that looks like this. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to, I'm not doing any real renders here. I'm just having a pretty small resolution. I'm just going to render like 10 frames, but I just want to go through a few things to note about how you can use this. We went over some of these in class, um, but let's just go through them now. So first of all, reminder about how to actually use these. The first thing up here is your master layer. So this um, thing will always be to go back to your original uh, scene. But down here, we can create as many extra layers as we want. Just click that. And I can name this one, you know, like um, robot. Actually, I'll call this, you know, like shot three foreground. And maybe I'll make another layer preemptively and call it shot three background. Something simple. And now, I can look at each of these layers, but I don't have anything in them. So to add something to it, I have to create a collection. And the collection, maybe this one I'll call robot. The collections don't really matter what they're named aside from you staying organized. The what the layer's name does matter because that will appear in your render uh, when you actually render stuff. But anyway, so in my collection here, I can just select, let's say, my entire robot, and add that to the collection. And while I'm doing that, my, my character is technically holding a prop here, so I'll just add that as well. Um, so now if I solo this render layer, I should only see those things that I added to the collection. And these will render as their own image sequence when I start doing my batch rendering. For the background, um, I can create a collection here. I'll just call this EVENV for environment. And I will do the same thing. You can get much more specific about how you're adding stuff in here, of course. You don't have to just add the group, but for this, I'm just doing it really quick. Um, so there's my background. Now, the first method, uh, so basically, you know, when I batch render, these it will render my master layer it will render this layer and it will render this all as three separate image sequences um what i'm going to do is um scenario number one here would be if my character is moving but the background is staying still so let's say it's, you know any shot where the camera is not moving um uh, in that case, I can just render one image of my background, and I don't even have to batch render for that. I can just do a normal render uh, in my render view and save that out as a single still image. So if you are if you have a shot with no camera movement, you can definitely get away with just um, uh, just rendering one image of your background. I'm going to add in a dome light in here just so that my renders look slightly better. Um, so if I wanted to just batch render this render layer, what I can do is I can uncheck this clapboard from here, and I can also uncheck it from the master layer because I don't need to render the whole scene if I'm trying to separate them into layers, save some render time. And with this, this one as the only one that's renderable, I can just uh, run a batch render the way that you normally do it. I'm just using Redshift right now, so um, there's a you know for Render Man they have it has its own um, like batch rendering button. I'm pretty sure uh, I don't have all this stuff memorized, but <laughs> so Redshift is going through this. It's blasting through these because they're not really high resolution or high settings or anything. Um, so there are some PNGs that I can create, and those would appear in my project folder, in my images, and look, here's a folder that's called shot3 foreground, and here is, I'm not sure why these ones, 
just a preview thing. For some reason, these ones were black and these ones were white. Interesting. Um, it didn't also. It also didn't name these the way I wanted them to. Why did that happen? Oh, frame padding. How did that get turned down? That's weird. Okay, well, I wanted that to be up. Um, so anyway, I could just take my, in this scenario, I could just say, render my one image of the background, render my image sequence of the foreground, and then in After Effects, I can just overlay um, this image sequence on top of the one image sequence of the backdrop. I'm going to delete that. Now, just a real quick, if you don't have uh, a still camera and you do have to render an image sequence of the background and the foreground and you but you still don't necessarily want to just render the master layer because let's say that you want to still do like a rack focus or at least be able to color correct or do other stuff separately between the background and the foreground you still might want to separate your renders into layers um, but here's something cool we can do so in my collection here um, if I have this uh, open, uh, this render setup window here open, and I open my render settings, um, I can actually go and on whatever I have selected over here, um, I, I can't do this in the master layer, but if I have one of my other render layers selected, I can actually right click in anywhere in the render settings menu. So I'll go for my samples, and I can right-click and see Create Absolute Override for Visible Layer. So this will only work on the layers you create, but I can set an override. You know, maybe I can set my samples for something here. That's probably too many, honestly, but, you know, for this quick example, you can make this as high as you want for <laughs> your actual renders. Um, I could create two, you know, multiple overrides. I could create overrides for motion blur, I could even make whether it's enabled or not an override, so that could be something. And you can tell that something's overridden because obviously it'll appear in here, but also in the render settings it will be orange. And when I click on a different layer, you can see that all of that stuff is back to the default. So what that means is when I do my batch render on my foreground, all of these settings will come into effect that I over overrode I guess that's the correct way of saying it. Um, and when the batch, uh, when I batch render the background layer, that will have lower settings. So you know, and I can make an override for this too to make these, you know, this smaller. Um, so you can set as many overrides as you want on anything that you want. And basically, what I'm getting at here is that you could still batch render your background instead of just doing one render, still render of it, but um, you could render the, the background at a lower quality than the foreground, because the foreground is the important thing, your character, or whatever it is in your scene. So the foreground could be a higher quality, the background could be lower quality, you could batch render both of these and then still not batch render the master layer, because that would still take too much time. And bada bing, bada boom, there you go, you have um, saved yourself some render time. Um, technically, you could even, you know, this is getting a little overly specific, but, you know, you could even create an override for which camera is rendering, create an override for um, the height, the width and height of the image resolution that you're doing. So this is actually really awesome because you can um, control everything about how your renders look. Um, and so I'm not actually going to do that right now because I, I don't have too much time to make this, um, video, but, um, you know, you guys don't need to be shown how to put some renders into After Effects. Um, but there's one more thing that you can do, um, if you really need to, um, and I might have to open After Effects for this part, but, um, what I might be able to do is I'm going to get rid of these overrides. So I just clicked on the actual render settings over right here and deleted those. Um, what I might try is creating an override, a material override on my foreground, and I can call this like mask or something. And in here I will put a surface shader. 
in RenderMan, you could probably just use the um, the shader that's called um, what's it called? Hmm. Well, surface shader should, should probably show up in RenderMan. Anyway. I'm uh, <laughs> doing this tutorial on the fly here, so forgive me. Um, but in this case, um, what I what I would probably want to do is still render the master layer. So I'll turn that back on. And I will also render the foreground layer here. Um, but the foreground is just going to be a black silhouette so that I can alpha mask um, in Photoshop. I can alpha mask out the background. So for this, I might just do a quick actual batch render here and see how long that takes me. Let's see see which one can finish first, the background, uh, the rendering, or opening After Effects. Of course, I don't even... Okay, there's After Effects. My computer... It's taking an awfully long time to open this. Um, new composition, make sure it's 24 frames per second. No, thank you. I don't remember why I had this resolution in here, to be honest. I also don't seem to be able to click anything. Okay, the batch render's finished already. And this is just being a piece of crap. Come on now. Alright, so I just paused that. Uh, I made this just smaller resolution because that's, I didn't actually make my renders um, large for, for this test here. So um, here's my master layer, and this has redshift uh, watermarks all over it, but we'll live. And then I also have my foreground, which is a mask, and oh, I thought I changed my... I think when I uh, installed a new version of After Effects, it reverted my import preferences because I, at some point, set my preferences here to be automatically bring things in at 24 frames per second. Uh, anyway, so I'll bring those in and you can be like, well, how small is this composition? Um, I don't seem to be getting any animation. I'm slightly confused about what's going on here. Weird. Okay, well, sorry, this is, uh, there, I keep getting weird mysteries showing up that are confusing me. I guess maybe it's because I only rendered the first, no, the first 10 frames should still be moving. Um, I don't know what the heck's going on. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, take both of these, pre-compose those, and call this, you know, like, foreground masked and I'm going to put another um, copy of the master layer underneath that and in here so I'm inside my pre-comp now um, want to make sure that you have your modes checked on so that you can see your track map and what I can do is I can set this to luma map or Mm. Yeah, uh, since I did it as PNG, um, that's why um, I want. I, yeah, I have to use Alpha Mat now. Um, if you didn't do it as PNG, you could still do it as Luma Mat. Luma is just black and white. Um, so now I can have my um, just my character by himself back in comp number one. 
I can toggle that on and off. Um, and now what I can do is I can look for a good old some sort of blur. Gaussian blur is probably one of the best, uh, your easiest ones to use anyway. And I can, so technically I'm blurring the entire image, but I just have a second copy of the character kind of pasted on top of it. Um, and then, you know, I can animate this blur or I can do whatever. Um, and now you can still separate your layers, um, your, yeah, your scene into layers, and um, you didn't have to render a complete, you know, you still had to render the entire scene uh, as one master layer, but then the second render uh, that you had to do is um, a lot faster because it's just like a surface shader that's just a black and white silhouette. So, um, I'm still not sure why this, is, this animation isn't actually showing up, um, but this is basically the third option. So option number one is just render a still image of the background and just batch render the foreground. Option number two is batch render both of them, but you can set overrides on the render settings. Um, and option number three is that you just render the master layer, but then you make a mask to batch render of one part of your animation. Uh, but yeah, so that's render setup. Sorry, this tutorial got kind of clunky, uh, but I had only a few minutes to sit down and, and do this. Um, so if you need to go back and rewatch any of this, then you can just fast forward through it. By the way, half of this stuff, I just double checked by going on uh, the Maya help doc. So here they literally gave, you know, I basically could have just <laughs> sent you a link to this, um, this page and you would have been able to to see everything for yourself but don't forget to check the uh maya help docs for more information about render setup or render settings or anything like that all right that's enough i will see you all later